No, the thing is, um, decision making, as I said earlier, is a key thing here. And that's what the Stay in Business initiative is all about, is to support entrepreneurs and business owners in finding the right answers so that they can optimize the way that they respond to the situation. So uh, this may be surprising to some that one would have a campaign that says stay in business, but that one of the options may be to close your business. So, and this, this, this will cover, I'll cover just now in the remaining slides, you know, sort of what those options are, because closing a business may be the best option for an entrepreneur to be able to come out of a failing business and minimizing the, the pain and the, and the suffering for all involved, including the clients, perhaps even the staff um, and other stakeholders, but definitely the owner, so that it's possible to actually start a business anew uh, in the near future. Or it may be that you reshape your current business. So I'm going to go quite rapidly through these four points that I want to share with you today. Uh, please, please note questions there. Uh, click that button, the question button, and put your questions in there as we go along. Uh, we'll, we can come back to the questions later on, but if you have them down, we can refer to them too. So those four points, uh, why, is the, why do businesses go into distress? What is the level, understanding the level of distress? How do you approach your decision-making when you are under distress? And uh, what are thoughts around business innovation or reinvention that you can, can apply or when it is uh, suitable for you? Uh, so firstly, I think it's important to note that we're not talking about stress here. Stress is that normal stuff that we have for business. We're talking about businesses under distress, which is much more severe and, and threatening the existence of that business. So they are typically, you know, not only linked to the current situation that we're in, but there are typical reasons why businesses go into distress. And in a lot of cases, it is that the business model is not just not feasible. And in fact, even now, and during this time that we have lockdowns and so on, it may be that uh, the frailty of a business model is proven to be too frail. And uh, that if the business model was a bit more robust, uh, it may have survived, the business may have survived. Uh, but there are also very other, many other reasons. The business owner may take too much money out of the business. Um, there may be issues around technically being technically competent. You know, uh, we see that a lot in entrepreneurship support that we work with business owners that are technically astute, you know, they're, they're best world class, but um, the value that they create in producing uh, good stuff is destroyed by the financial decisions they make. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the last one there in that list is about external uh, risk management, you know, sort of, so no one really foreseen that they'd be COVID-19. But imagine this, if you can, if, if it becomes part of your standard planning framework to be able to respond to external risks like this going into the future. So uh, these are some of the reasons and, and for us to start understand why our businesses go into stress, maybe it may also point to deeper issues than just kind of the environment that has changed, the COVID-19 pandemic. So each of us will be able to address that, uh, those questions differently, you know, sort of based on our situation. Um, but there is kind of a lack of framework that we can use. Uh, and this trading cycle framework that I'm sharing with you now kind of amplifies that, that uh, businesses uh, in a lot of instances uh, go into distress um, either because it, the, the cycle that they move through is too slow or there are leakages in the cycle. So a good way to think of this is a bicycle wheel. And the wheel goes around, but if there's leakage and you lose air, you're not going to go so fast and, 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 and proceed so well. So if you start at the right, right top corner, you know, sort of typically you would start with some, some input, you know, sort of an, an, if it's a manufacturing business, it would be raw materials. It may be other things in other business contexts, but uh, that input creates the uh, ability for you to um, make something or to offer something. It could be a service to, you know, service business, uh, which you then um, sell to uh, people that need that. Um, and in that way, you create a uh, uh, cash flow for you to service your debtors <coughs> and to pay um, other, oh, sorry, to, to collect from your debtors, of course, you know, sort of your clients that you've sold to, and then to pay all the expenses, which may leave you with something to earn yourself if you are a, a small business, you know, sort of. Now, the problem is that in m many instances, there's leakage here, you know, sort of. So we don't have to go into the detail here of all of this. But um, for instance, in this scenario that we are now, the cell, um, uh, cell there at the bottom right was badly affected by uh, customer change changes in customer habits. It doesn't display so well on my screen. I'm not sure why that is. 
but um, uh, the point being there that if if customers uh, if there are changes in the habits and preferences of customers that you get a disruption in the cycle so you can see it's it's not as if it's just one element because it's a cycle it's it, it it goes through the whole cycle and if you get a bottleneck in selling then the rest of the cycle will not work either so no use for you to actually get better and better at certain things so you can get better at making you know and a lot of people go into that phase because they they think if they if they can make just make a better product it will sell better but if that element that slice in the in the cycle is not attended to and resolved then it doesn't help that you go uh, and make some other elements of your cycle much better so this is a kind of a framework just for us to start to say why are we in distress where is the problem lying and uh, the current situation that we're in is around the selling for most people so that leaves us then to go on to move on to the next of this to say if we are now experiencing distress so we we see there are problems and we can start to understand where the problems are coming from what level of distress are we in and this is a, a framework that region one of the uh, partners in the stay in business initiative um, is using in their distress work uh, in fact Dev de Villiers will be offering a workshop on the 30th of July which I'll give you details on now so if you if you kind of like what what is presented here do you think it resonates with you it, it may be good for you to uh, consider attending that webinar oh, sorry that that workshop but basically what they say is that there are different uh, 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 levels of distress and if you understand what level you're on you can come up with the right response to it so it can move from just performance enhancement you know if the distress is not too severe to actually liquidation and start and, and shutting down so i'm just going to go uh, uh i'm aware you know sort of that we need to be aware of the time too and so on you know sort of so um i'm going to go through this fairly quickly but just to give that overview you know sort of of uh what these different ones are so you know the blue on the left there in this in this framework is about a performance enhancement so this is um, typically where profitability is declining perhaps and you know the market is shifting a bit and there's cash flow restrictions and so on and you you need to improve in the business in terms of uh, 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 revenue and uh, and the finances and perhaps there's some elements of product refinement and so on that will that will push that forward for you um, but in many instances this is about efficiencies and cutting out the the the, the leakages as we saw in the previous cycle um, to optimize so it's uh, nothing serious but kind of refining what you're doing it gets a bit more serious when we move into the space of saying um, you can have a turnal, uh, internal um, uh, informal turnaround uh, so this is not um, uh, relating to any kind of legislative framework because the law becomes from the next one onwards the law the law starts play into the game too but this early stage distress is still very much um, allowing you to uh, go to your um, uh, you know sort of to, 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 to look at how you manage your finances um, uh, how, you, how you can possibly reduce debt, uh, what value you have in your business that you are not actually turning into cash flow um, uh, a bit more severe than the first one um uh and uh, involving um in this instance um engaging outside parties so those those that are chasing you for your money at the end of the month to uh, approach those with a with a with a plan to say listen um we are we are we are experiencing the distress uh, we are negotiating with you uh, how are we going to deal with this um but there's nothing that that's that's formal about it it's your informal interaction with People. so a lot of our businesses that are maybe six months let's see in six months time we have problems may um, uh, may may look at how they deal with um, the value creation and how they the cash flow that they can actually manage um, um, in this instance now if we go to medium distress and compromise is in fact something that's confirmed in the high court so we don't have to go into the detail of each of these steps here now because that's what's covered in the workshop on the on the 30th so uh, but just perhaps to note here that there are different uh, provisions in the law for us to consider here in our decision making and that we must find the right one that's going to help us to move through the distress that we have into a, a good functioning financially healthy business again uh, uh, as you see on the graph there on the right you know sort of it's going from the yellow um, to the green you know sort of so medium distress uh, compromise you know sort of which is actually then confirmed in the high court uh, a step fur further where, where the symptoms are actually more severe um, where you see uh, you're really struggling to pay 
Uh, it's always late submissions. You can't actually SAS, you know, sort of you kind of use as a bank in a way. Um, uh, but there's still possibility for you to turn the business around. And this is kind of uh, fairly new in the company's law to allow for a form of business rescue. So you apply uh, to be actually put into business rescue and there's a business rescue practitioner that works with you. And uh, that's really, really well controlled through the Companies Act, um, this process. Now, of course, um, if there's critical uh, critical situations leads to, to to death, you know, sort of so. In some instances, this is the reality is that, in, and if you're faced with that reality, to face it up quicker than later and to move through that phase with the least possible pain so that as, a, as an entrepreneur and as people working in a business, perhaps they can come out on the other side and there may be something in the future for them to uh, to relaunch or to or to start in a new uh, format, a new business. So those are regions, um, uh, five uh, channels, if we can put it that way, uh, about the levels of distress, which actually leads us into decision making too. So I'm kind of going through this fairly rapidly so that we can kind of maybe address some questions that they may be arising. Um, but let's let's just uh, s s uh, pause here for a moment, you know. Sort of. So, if we talk about those five possibilities, it's it starts off with being in distress, that blue uh, box. You know, sort of. So, uh, when a business is in distress, um, it can either be that it's already insolvent, and that the only real route for it is to top, stop trading and then to liquidate. And there's provision for that in the 1973 Act, the Companies Act, which clearly defines how liquidation happens. Um, and as I said earlier, for some of us in the room, in fact, that may be an option, you know, sort of if, uh, if, if we can do that in a way that still really leaves us with the resources to start something new, which is definitely the best option. Um, but perhaps the business is still solvent and um, you can explore, you know, sort of the other options and there are four other options there for you. So you can also stop trading if, if it turns out that your investigations into turning the business around is not uh, that great, but you're still solvent. So. Uh, and that distinction between being solvent and insolvent may sound like an accounting term, but it's quite important, in fact, because you stop trading, in fact, to wind up according to certain procedures in the in the Companies Act too, uh, with the intention uh, that you can equal things out, settle things as they as they should be, and then emerge from that into something new. Um, but that's based on your assessment of uh, where you are at. So there are different uh, three more for us to observe the, uh, in terms of continuing trading. Um, so we spoke about the, the informal restructuring, we spoke about the compromise, and we spoke about rescue, uh, business rescue as options. Uh, just to note that sometimes business rescue may in fact end up in winding up as well, uh, if that is business rescue fails. But um, the others are available for us. So if one looks at the top one, you know, sort of as, as an example, um, uh, just to give some more flesh uh, to it. and. Uh, Looks like you know, the graphics are, are, are displaying funny in some ways. But in any case, we can see what we need to see. So this is the option where we go from the stress. We're still solvent. Uh, we look at continued trading. And this is kind of the informal um, restructuring that we look at. So what are the main things that you can look at right now? So and I think that's why what makes it practical, the slide. So we can't see it so well because of the display there. But basically, if you can ask yourself, what do I need to do more of? And what do I need to do less of? What do, I, what do I need to stop doing and what do I need to start doing? So uh, yeah, yeah, just things that we see how we can balance them out and, and maybe there are some ideas that you can think of for your own business when you look at these, you know, sort of. So sales and margins, you know, sort of, so increase. So uh, there are real questions that we can ask in, in how do we derive our pricing, you know, sort of how do we create the value, the extra value that people are maybe prepared to pay for uh, if we talk about sales, you know, sort of um, in a shifting environment, uh, yeah, wh where, where could those sales happen, you know, sort of, and um, in what ways can you make uh, co connection with your customers, your existing customers and new, new c categories of customers. Um, while effectiveness and efficiency relates more to the in inside of functioning of your business, you know, sort of, so doing the right things, uh, you know, sort of, uh, maybe we spend a lot of time um, uh, creating drama around things that are not necessarily going to help the business move forward. That's effectiveness and efficiency is in those things that we're doing and that the people that we work with our teams doing is what, what can we do to actually uh, cut out the fat in, the, in that process so that we can do it in a more efficient way. 
and then uh, to what we need to decrease sort of production cost. You know, sort of so overheads is perhaps a, a more more pointed because that's sometimes where a lot of expenses um, uh, gather over time when things are going well. Um, so that may be something to to focus on and not to be afraid to cut quite deep into those kind of costs. So I'm going to move on. I mean, we of course can spend lots of time sp speaking about these things. I just want to get to the last point around business reinvention. And here we can use something like the business uh, model canvas. There are also other tools uh, available. Um, and for instance, if we look at that canvas, you know, sort of we can we can say, let's take, let's take, uh, we have uh, asset base, we've got some, some things to work with, we've got staff, um, and we are up at the moment offering some value, you know, sort of, so that value proposition there in the middle that looks like a kind of a gift. Um, in, in this, in this framework, in this business canvas model, which, which integrates all the different elements of your business model into one, a one page plan, basically, um, we can ask, what can we do differently? In creating value that may attract the attention of customers that otherwise would not. So then you move from that, that in that customer relations arrow, you move from uh, tweaking your value proposition, uh, finding new things that may you may not have done in the past based on the assets that you have and the ability that you have with your people to deliver something that wasn't done in the past. You know, sort of. So you don't have to go reinvent your whole business, but you tweak what you do. Or it could uh, be more radical, you know, sort of that you actually sort of what they call pivot, you know, sort of and say, but within this current business that we have, in fact, we can continue with this business, but it's going to look very differently. And the kind of products and services that we offer will shift also significantly, but it's still the same business. You know, sort of, so we can use this kind of framework to investigate how we can explore different ways. And each of those nine elements there on the plan, of course, have different things that we need to think about. Of course, cash flow is always the most important for us to drive when businesses are under the stress. So how do we create more cash is one of the key questions that we would be asking in this in the short run um, in this using this framework.